All right, so here we go, chapter 3, workplace, apprenticeship, 20. Chapter, not 1, not 2, but 3. Got it? Yep. What comes after 3? 4. Nice. That's three next. Half. Well, 3 and a half does come after 3, but wait, that's, that's not the answer. Okay. Chapter 3, service area volume and capacity. Now, we talked a little bit yesterday as we introed this and did a little activity where we actually measured the dimensions of different things. You calculated surface area, calculated volume. You looked up some uh, formulas, and we also borrowed some formulas from our, uh, from our workbook here. So this is the workbook uh, areas of two-dimensional figures, what we're going to start with first. And when we talk about two-dimensional figures, we're talking about just things you can draw on a paper, right? Like a rectangle, like a square, like a triangle, and like a parallelogram. Now, you probably know what these three are, but the parallelogram, maybe, you, if I would have told you, hey, what's a parallelogram, maybe you wouldn't have been able to tell me. But looking at this now, what is a parallelogram? Can someone describe what's happening here, especially all these little arrows and markings and stuff? Parallel. What's parallel? Uh, not all. To, the top two, the, the top two sides the side. and the side sides are parallel. Yeah, so opposite sides are parallel. So it's a four-sided figure where opposite sides are parallel. Okay. Now, here's a, here's a thing. In the rectangle, opposite sides are parallel with each other, and it's four-sided. So why isn't this a parallelogram? What's the difference between a rectangle and a parallelogram? Say again? I don't know. Okay, because look at those two sides are parallel and these two sides are parallel. So why why is this a, called a rectangle and not a parallelogram? You may see another difference? A parallelogram doesn't have a 90 degree angle. Okay, thank you. A parallelogram, especially in this diagram, does not have a 90 degree at any of its corners, right? Inside corners. These are not 90 degrees. And these are all 90 degrees. So a rectangle and a square, for that matter, have to have four 90 degree angles. Very good. Okay, now technically a rectangle is a parallelogram, but a parallelogram is not always a rectangle. So there are little differences between the two. So if the opposite sides are parallel, it's a parallelogram. And some special parallelograms can be rectangles and squares. All right, and triangle is just sort of like one of these things just doesn't belong, right? Triangle is totally out to lunch. This is like a distant cousin, one that you wish you never had. Okay, what else is on this page here? Oh, these guys too. Here's, here's another, um, these are other members of the distant cousin families that just really embarrass the family. Uh, this is a circle. You all know what a circle is, right? How many sides does a circle have? Zero. Zero. Oh, really? Anybody have a counter argument for that? I'm saying in an infinite number of sides. No, I didn't hear the joke. Was there a joke? <laughs> it's pointless. It's pointless? Yeah. What's pointless? The circle. The circle's not pointless. The circle. It's got an infinite number of points all around here. No, but it has no point. Oh, it has no corner. No point. Or a vertex. No point. <laughs> no, you keep saying no point, but it, it does have points. It doesn't have points. That's just a circle. Look at oh, it. doesn't have points. Okay, well, look at Let's just... just okay, What what is this made up of? What is a line made up of? Pencil. Pencil. A line is actually made up of a collection of points. Technically, a line is an infinite number of points bunched right up together. Anyways, we're getting into deep philosophical math here, which of course I enjoy, but you guys don't. Okay, so circle, the area for a circle, pi r squared, we know that already. This is called a trapezoid. Is this the same as a parallelogram, guys? No. Why not? No. Well, not both sides are not parallel. Okay, so when we talk about opposite sides, these two opposite sides, A and B here, they are parallel. Okay, so that's good. But these sides uh, 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 are not parallel. So that's a, that's a trapezoid, okay? So it has one pair of parallel opposite sides. One pair of opposite sides that are parallel, okay? For trapezoid. And the area, this is a bit of a complicated uh, formula, but it's one half 
the top plus the bottom, that's the two parallel side lengths, one half times the sum of those times the height. Okay? So these are formulas that you're going to need to know. Okay? You're going to need to refer back to these. You should memorize them. You could put them on your cue card. Okay? So you can have them all in one spot so you can be familiar with them. But we're going to do some questions now that are going to require us to use these formulas. Okay, let's take a look at example number one. So example number one says, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for you. Says, calculate the area of each figure. All right, this is a rectangle. Why is it not a square? I know right away it's not a square. Do you guys know why it's not a square? Yes? Because the, to be a square, all four sides have to be the same. Right. To be a square, all four sides have to be equal. This side length and this side length, they are not equal. Therefore, it's not a square. It's a rectangle. This is 90 degrees, and so it appears that this is certainly a rectangle. So, how do we find the area of a rectangle? Length times width. Right, very easy, isn't it? Area equals length times width. Now, you'll see me put a little dot here. That's another way of uh, showing multiplication, okay? Or you can use an X as well. Length times width, okay. So, the area here is 6.8 times 4.5. Just multiply the two together. All right, and so what do we get there? You do that on your calculator, you should get? 30.6. 30.6. Now, the units are important too, guys, okay? Area is whatever the units are for the length, and these units have to be consistent, okay? You can't have centimeters over here and meters over here, and then just simply multiply them. Can't do it. You gotta have, your units have to line up. They have to be the same. And then when you have centimeters like this, times centimeters, you get centimeters squared. So that's the unit. Okay, 30, what was it? 30 what? 38? 30.6. 30, 30.6 30 centimeters squared. Okay, so we'll remember the units there. Alright, example uh, 1b now. This, what shape is this? Triangle. triangle. And the area for a, whoops, the area for a triangle is? One half base times height. You'll also see me just do this for multiplication, just brackets around two um, quantities right next to each other. That also means multiplication. Okay, so the x, the, the solid dot in the middle, and just written like this, all means multiplication. So which is the base? Is this the base right here? No. No. The base would be one of the sides, wouldn't it? Okay, and generally it's the side that's on the bottom. But the base is the side that is associated with this measurement right here, which is the height. Now the height goes from the base up to a vertex or a corner that's opposite of that side. Okay? All right, boys? Paying attention. If you had a triangle like this, boys, okay? And let's say this was five centimeters, and this height here was four centimeters. Okay. Now, very important. This is not the base while this is the height. It's not. Because the height has to kind of bump into somewhere in the middle of the base. So this is the base over here. So you have to know this side in order to use this formula. Okay? You, you understand? So the, the height of this triangle would be whatever this this would be, the, the length of this here. Saying it's a right triangle. So the base and the height, okay? So simply put, we do 12.8 times 7.8 and then times one half or divided by two. Okay, so the solution for B is right here. 12.8 times 7.8 divided by two or multiplied by one half. This is what you get. Finally, the parallelogram. What's the formula for the parallelogram? Yep, it's just the same as um, really the same as a rectangle uh, base and except for you don't use the other side you use the height so it's base times height so look at this this height if I were to draw this height over here too look at what we have oh, oh, oh. look at that it's a rectangle without if you subtract this off you get and you put it over here you take this you put it over here you get a rectangle and then this would be like length times width right <laughs> Cool, eh? So parallelogram is base times height. And multiply those two together simply, 
you get this. This these were in meters before. See the units in meters. So the units are meters squared. Okay, pretty straightforward, hey? Any questions on that? All right, so here's build your skills, your chance to, to build your skills and to let your skills shine. For each picture, name the shape and calculate the area. Let's do the first one together. The shape is? It's a circle. It's a circle. It's a circle. It's a German circle, okay? I'm not sure why I said that. Okay, and the area is what? What's the formula? Do you know what? Right on. Pi r squared. You might have that memorized already from other math classes. I'm not sure. Okay, what's pi again? Oh my goodness, pi. What is pi? Ooh, that's very good. You know a lot of those decimals. So pi button, I would encourage you, please, 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 use your pi button on your calculator. You all should have a scientific calculator, and your pi button will give you the full decimal. That's not all the decimal places, but that is a, a pretty detailed, okay, uh, decimal form. And so that's going to be the best. If you have to, please use 3.14 at least. Don't use 3.1. Use 3.14. If you're typing it out, even 3.14159 would be best. But if you can use your pi button, that's great. Okay, so the radius, the r, is radius, and that is the distance from the center to the edge of the circle. And that's 44 millimeters. Okay, so pi times 44 squared. How do I do that on my calculator? Well, here's pi. I'll, I'll do that again. Pi. You can just use brackets if you have them, or just hit multiply. And then you do 44 and then put a little squared on there. See that? So my calculator has this on there. Your calculator might, will probably have that button as well. And that's all you need to do. I close it off in brackets there, and then boom, this is what you get. Pi times 44 squared is 6,082. Go to two decimal places if you're wondering. Okay? Go to two decimal places if you're wondering. So 6082, okay. 6080, whoops, 2.12, I believe that was, okay? And we'll go to the second decimal place, so you'll look at the number to the right. It's less than 5, so we'll keep that as a 2. Now, what are my units? Millimeters squared. Millimeters squared is correct. Correcto mando for the circle. The circle. Okay, this is a triangle. The triangle. <laughs> I don't know who in the world says it like that, but... I just did. Okay. Um, so here is a triangle, and this is the base. If this is the base, is this the height right here? No, sir. No, it's not. That's the this side length. The height is shown over here. Height is usually shown as a dotted line, too. That's kind of a tip. Okay, so area is one half what? Base times height. Base times height. Very good. So one half. The base we said was 9.3. And the height is 5.7. Okay, so you can do that on your calculator. You can use this. You can make this a fraction if you want, 0.5. Or I don't know if you knew this, but you could also write it like this. Okay, over two. Oh. See, divided by. If you do all that divided by two, that's the same as multiplying it by one half. So what do we get for an answer there? Let's see. You get 26.5? Uh, 26. Uh, not 27. Oh, okay. What did you get with the decimal there? What are all your decimals? 27.075. Okay, well, that's okay. Let's, somebody else do it. Where's your calculator? You got her there? Awesome. Okay, try it out. Let's figure out this mystery. 9.3 times 5.7 divided by 2. 26.5? Your calculator is it's lying to you. So 26.5, you guys said? Mm -hmm. Okay, and what are the units? Meters. Meters. <clears throat> Thank you. You're welcome. Square it. Uh, it's an area. Sorry, it's an area. Area for the triangle. Meters squared. The area for the triangle. 
Unit squared. You have to remember this. You have to remember this. Unit squared. Everyone knows this. Except for you. Okay? Oh, that's good. That's a good accent. All right. Okay. So, go ahead and take a few minutes to finish. C and D. I'll come help you. Your calculator is really playing tricks on you. Okay. Finish build your skills right here. And then we'll do the next example in a bit. All right, so just as you fill it, finish up, build your skills, here are the answers for 1, C, and D. And you can check 2 as well. Now, these are some pretty interesting uh, answers here. For the rectangle, length times width gives you an area of 44.2. For the parallelogram, base times height, look at that. They're the same numbers, the same area. So look at this. This area right here is exactly the same as this area right here. Now what else is kind of cool is that um, here are here's a triangle with the same dimensions, a height of 5.2, a base of 8.5, the area equals one half base times height, and so your answer is 22.1, exactly half of this number. That's how that works. And of course here's another triangle, okay, area 22.1, and it appears that I did not put E down here. Guess what E is though? 22.1 meters squared. Okay, so you have to make sure you show your work to get full credit for this. Okay, but I'm giving you the answers now so you can check your stuff. Okay, so these three triangles have the height. So this, really, this is like the height here because it's a 90 degree. See, that's the height. This is the height. Now, the height here is outside of the triangle because this is called an obtuse triangle. It's got an angle that's greater than 90. So the height is actually outside if this is the base. But they represent the exact same Aria. The triangles have the same aria. What? The triangles, the tre triangles, have the same aria. Yeah? Ah. This is just for the international crowd watching this video all over the world as we speak. Isn't your channel private? No, it's not private. The whole world watches this, man. Are you so kidding me? Make a bunch of fake YouTube I don't know what you're saying. I don't know what you're saying. What do you notice about the area calculations? Well, we've just discussed that, haven't we? A lot of them are the same. They are not all the same. Okay, let's take a look at example two. Okay, pause, pause. If you're not done that yet, you need to skip on to this page right here. This is page 129. Page 129. So what do you do if you have shapes that are not typical rectangles, squares, triangles, parallelograms, trapezoids, circles, that sort of thing? You do have to draw yourself some imaginary lines. So let's say that this is sort of some sort of like you know backyard or something, and someone's trying to find how much grass they would need. Yeah, it's an awkward shape, isn't it? Trying to find out how much grass they would need, what what area of coverage they would need to grass this whole yard shaped like this. Well, what you could do is a number of things. And again, I'm just going to do this. You could extend this line, okay, to make a rectangle here. You could extend this to make a rectangle here and have a triangle here. Now the thing is, you've got to be careful. Can you find this length right here? Can you find that? Because it's not given. And so you have to use pieces of uh, the, uh, the diagram to try and figure that out. So this right here, this length, same as this length. It's right about there. So this is 3.1, isn't it? Now how do I find this distance right here? From there down to there. Yes, it does. 6.8, same as this one. So this is plus 6.8. You see that? All right. So you can easily do this. So you have a, a width here and you have a length of this. Okay. Now, can we, guys, can we figure out what this, this part is? It's tricky. How do I figure out what this is right here? Oh, you can divide it by 2. You gotta be careful. I don't, well, I don't know if you divide what by two. Like, what are you dividing by two? Well, how do you know this is half though? You don't know that this and this are the same. They don't look the same actually. How do you times it by two point eight by the thirteen point four? Multiply. Well, see, what we're trying to find is this length right here. So let's check this out. The whole distance from here to here, okay, is thirteen point four. Everyone see that? Okay. Now, do I know what this part is? Yes. Mm, yeah, I do actually. It's 6.2. So if we do 13.4 minus 6.2, we get 6 .2. this. That's um, not 6.2. I don't have 
7.2. What's 7.2? Close. 7.2. So again, you can find out all this stuff. Now this is a triangle, so we have the base. We know what the base is, right? It's this 3.1 plus 6.8. We know what that is. And I know what the height is, don't I? What's the height? 12.6. It's given right here. So what you do, and I think that they, okay, so they, they separated this a little bit differently. No problem. If you separate it differently than I did, that's no problem. You should get the same total area if you add up the individual areas um, properly. Okay, so look, at they did it a bit different. They drew their line over here first and then down. However you cut it, it uh, doesn't really matter it's too much. Um, see, this one, I, you have to do less calculations, I guess, if you do this line because you're given the length and the width, you're given the length and the width here. So you didn't really have to do much. You'd have to find this out, I guess. So the total for that one is given on the next page, and that looks like uh, this one, 172. Oh, here we go, look at alternative solution. They, they did it the same way I did it in their alternative situation. So, yeah, you can cut it up however you want. All right. So I'll do the first build your skills question with you, and then I'll let you finish the assignment. So number three, now how are we going to do this here? This is not a rectangle or a, a square or a anything, but it does it have maybe two pieces to it that you can see? Yeah. So what do you think? Do you want to close it off this way, or do you want to close it off this way? This one? Okay, let's do that. That's great, I think, because this would be like area one. And this is how you show your work, guys, okay? Very important. Oh, area one, I just wrote area two. So area one, and you show your calculations for the area that you have designated on your diagram. So please do this. Area one is going to be a length times width because it's a rectangle. And what are our two dimensions? Five times 6.5. So what's that? It should be about 32.5, is it? Someone confirm that, please? Sorry? Yeah, 32.5, okay. So this is going to be inches squared, good. That's the first area. Let's do now the second area, area two. And this is how you show your calculations and you show your work. Now, do I just go seven times eight, is that right? No. Did you get this area? Oh, why not? No, because it's the whole. Ah, because it's the whole way across. That's right, the whole way across. And this is only seven. So what is this again? This is five. So this whole length is 12. Very good. There we go. Try and get that drawn. Awesome. So the length, so length times width again, and it's 8 times 12. Okay, and that should be what 96 inches squared. So am I done? Am I done? No. Why not? Why am I not done here? Uh, now I have to add the areas, buddy. Yeah, that's right. So area total is area 1 plus area 2, which gives us 32.5 plus 96. And what, what do you get there for an answer? 128.5. Yeah. I like it. Uh, am I done there? Just 128.5? Am I done? Inches squared. Thank you. Inches squared. Do not forget your units. Do not forget the units. Jesus Christ. Okay, great. Okay, you take some time here with the rest, um, and you divide those up however way you can. Please label area one, two, and three if you need it, and show your work accordingly. Okay, no problem. Let's go over number two real quick. So um, it was suggested that we put a line here to sh to to um, separate this into a big rectangle here and a little triangle, that's great. Now with the triangle, okay, the one thing you gotta do, or there's two things you gotta do, you gotta notice that this base here is 4.2, it's the same as the other side. That's what this length is. The height, this would be the height of the triangle, right? And here we have 7.8 is this side, and then 9.6 is this length right here, and that goes all the way to the tip. So the difference is going to be the difference here between 9.6 and 7.8. That's going to be your height. So it's literally 9.6 minus 7.8. And what's that going to be? 1.8? 1.8. Is that right? I'm just doing it right now. 1.8? 1.8. 1.8. 1.8. 1.8. 1.8. 1.8. 1.8. 1.8. 1.8. 1.8. 1.8. 1.8. 1.8. 1.8. 1.8. 1.8. 1.8.
Yeah. <coughs> so you can find the area of one. Okay, it's a rectangle there, and then area two is a triangle. Oh, Let's take a look at this B then. So the area, the combined area of one and two, should be thirty-six point six meters squared. Mm -hmm. Did you get that for an answer? No. No. You Can didn't. I see eh? how you did it, so I can see where yes, I'll show you on the side how I did that. Okay, so just real quickly here, area 1 would be 7.8, that's this length here, times the width, 4.2, to get 32.76 uh, square meters. And then the triangle here is 1 half the base times the height, to get 3.78. You add those together and you get this, 36.54, and you can leave it as two decimal places, it's fine. Or you can round it to one decimal place like these other measurements are. It's a good idea to make it the same as the given ones if you can. So that would be 36.5 or 36.6 depends, uh, well actually, it should be 36.5 rounded. Um, I think I rounded something else somewhere. Maybe not. Anyways, 36.54 or 36.5 probably would be best, according to our decimals. Okay? Now, number four, let's just go over number four real quick. It doesn't actually ask you to solve for the area for this, does it? It says show four different ways you could divide the figure below to calculate its area. So you could do this, All right? Area one, area two, area three. You could do this, area one over here, area two here, and area three. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Everybody understanding this so far? Okay, we could probably do this, couldn't we? Have I done this one yet? No. Did I do this one? No. We could do this, area one, two, and three. And we could probably do this, area one, two, and three. There's lots of different ways you could do this, and they're just asking you to explore those different ways. Okay. So we're going we're gonna to finish up. We've got about, what do we got, 10, 12, 12, 13 minutes. So I'm just going to introduce uh, to you surface area of three-dimensional objects. So let's take a look at this one example, and then I'll get you started on your example practice three. questions. Yeah. I think we're on example three, right? Okay, so just the last part of this, uh, um, maybe a bit bigger lesson, but working with surface area of prisms. Okay, so a prism is a three-dimensional object and the ends are the same, so the top and the bottom would be the same. Top, bottom, top, bottom. Top, which would be sort of this end, and the bottom would be the other end, they would be the same. So it's kind of like taking a two-dimensional shape and then literally pulling it and stretching it out so that the ends are identical and you have a, a third dimension. Okay? Take a circle and you grab it and you pull it out and it becomes a cylinder. Okay, so anyways, these are prisms. So surface area of prisms, well, what you gotta do is you have to uh, find the area of each of the faces and then add them all up. There's one, there's two, there's three, and we understand there's a fourth fa face at the back and there's a fifth face on this side and then the bottom would be the sixth face for this one, okay? So that's how you find the surface area. Now let's name these things. So if we were to name this, what you do is you, where does it say? Okay. So to name them, we name the shape of the base. Okay. And I'll talk about right or oblique in a second. So you name the shape of the, ba the base and then th that's basically the descriptor and you put prism at the end. So if the base is a rectangle on the bottom, it's a rectangular prism. Now what does this right have to do with it? What do you think? Right angles. Right angles. Very good. So look at the base here. This is sort of the base right here. And, and look at the uh, 90 degree angles here. See how the, the, the base goes straight up at a 90 degree angle from the flat side of the base. So this is right as well. This is right. This is not right. Okay? That's not a right prism. That is something called oblique. Oblique means slanted. But let's get back to B. So B, this is a 
Uh, what's this shape here? It's got six sides. It's called oh, a... Hexagon. Hexagon. No, Hexagon. six sides is hex. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so tri is three, quadrilaterals four, penta is five, hexa is six, hepta or septa is seven, octa, eight, nana, nine, deca, ten. That's how you know that. So this is um, a, a right uh, hexagonal prism right here. Right hexagonal prism. Some of these words are kind of weird, eh? But that's because it's a hexagon there. So this one is a triangle as a base. It looks like it, it looks like it's a 90 degree as it stretches up towards the other base or the other identical side. So this is a right triangular prism. And this last one, D, is an oblique, because it's not a right angle here. Oblique rectangular prism. Or you can say maybe even a square prism. That you can't really tell. OK? Any questions? All right, so let's see. Oh, these ones are pretty easy. Um, the last one. Um, so what you have to do is identify down here the shape of the base, whether it's right or oblique. The shape of the lateral faces, okay, so the lateral faces are going to be, for most of these, are going to be what kind of shape, you think? This is the lateral face right here. Rectangle. Yep. Rectangle. I'm looking at all these, ra these lateral faces, and I'm seeing, oops, that one's a bit weird. I'm seeing all rectangles here. All rectangles. So that's all rectangles in this column. And then you then name the prism. Okay, so you work through, build your skills here. And um, that's the last uh, little bit of your lesson to be done.